What's up, bro? Alright. <laughs> I don't know if we've ever hugged like that. Before. I don't think we have. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> Alright, what's up? We are out in front of Joey's downtown Dapper with the barber himself, uh, Shane. And uh, we are gonna get a haircut. Somebody's gonna get a haircut. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna talk about what it means to walk with God and follow God while working at a barbershop. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Come on in. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Baby puppy, go say hi. You're being rude. Oh. All right, so we are here inside Joey's downtown barber with Shane, and uh, he's about to cut our boy Alex's hair. And uh, we're gonna ask him some questions just about being a barber, walking with Jesus, and kind of what that looks like. So, how long have you been a barber? I've been cutting hair like with school and everything for about two years. Like I was going to school and like it was kind of finishing up and then I was like on Instagram, just like scrolling on the explore page and there was a guy that was doing it and uh, he was like lived in LA and like cut a bunch of like homeless people and stuff. And I was like, I don't really necessarily want to do that, but it kind of opened my eyes. Like it seemed fun and cool and I would be able to like hang out and talk to people. Yeah. And uh, so I would, I'd never cut anyone's hair before, but I was like, let's go to school and just see kind of what happens. And, right. Last last question about cutting hair specifically. Yeah. Um, what's the hardest haircut to do? It drives me crazy when like, I'm doing a haircut and like I like go to comb the dude's hair or something and then like his head like moves. It just it makes every haircut like <laughs> So you want a nice sturdy head. Yeah, just like right there. Kids are hard. I did a kid that or I've done a bunch of kids like first haircuts uh -huh. and that are like nine months old or like a year old and they're like running around, they're on like mom's lap. So it's like super awkward like So who's harder, the nine year old kid or our father? Dad, every day of the week. <laughs> My dad comes, he sits down, and he like he's put a 10 minute timer. And he's like, I don't want to be here longer than that. And when it goes off, he'll stand up and try to go home. No, he won't. Yeah, he, multiple times. He said, I'm like, Dad, you just give me two. <laughs> so this this is a barbershop. You don't obviously work here alone. Tons of different people um, coming in and out. Um, it's not a Christian environment, um, but you're a follower of Jesus, so do you find it uh, challenging ever to, for your faith and your journey with God um, in an environment like this that obviously people aren't, don't have the same goals and priorities? Yeah, it's definitely challenging. I don't know, it's, it's interesting because like, I've grown up in the church and I've, and I've also grown up like in skate parks mm -hmm. and um, like public school and things like that and so I felt like when I, I made a decision to like walk with Jesus in like ninth grade when I was skating a lot, hanging out with a lot of skateboarders, going to public school, that was where like the challenge was mm -hmm. for me at least. Like where was I was making that decision. Making the decision yeah. at that point. Mm -hmm. I mean it's still challenging just like being around, like hearing a lot of the words or yeah. you know hearing a lot of people's like opinions on things and kind of viewpoints like that but um, I felt like the real hard part was making the decision right. then mm -hmm. and then now it's kind of like most of the time when somebody's like I, I know what's right and wrong right. and I know like what I should be doing and what I shouldn't be doing so when I hear somebody kind of saying it I can just kind of be like yeah right. it makes me think of the verse in Daniel which is a such a good verse to hang our hat on just that idea that Daniel purposed in his heart yeah. that regardless of the situation around him, yeah. he was gonna keep following God. And it's just kind of that decision, because it, whether it's in a barber shop, or whether it's you're at school, or you're off of college, or yeah. whatever you're doing, making that decision, it's kind of that decision before the decision. Yeah, exactly. So that yeah. you're gonna follow God regardless of the environment that you find yourself in. Yeah, and I, I think if I 
were to make that, like, if it were later on where I haven't fully made the decision to walk with Jesus and I was in this environment, yeah. it'd be a lot more difficult for me to make it here. Yeah. Just because, I mean, there's so many different people and, you know, I'm sitting and talking with them and they share a lot mm -hmm. to me. And, uh, you know, like, just kind of like stories of like their weekend or yeah. like how things sound. And like, I think if I didn't make it back then, beforehand, mm -hmm. you know, I would be enticed by different things now. So with that, with all those challenges and just that reality, obviously it's that decision, but what are some of the daily things that you do just to keep your spiritual, you know, health right and your mind right and uh, keep acting right? You know, just like, I, I have my devotion times in the morning before I come to work mm -hmm. and um, I don't know, I just kind of like go in with a mindset, like kind of realigning everything like every day. And you know, just keeping my eyes on like why why I feel like I'm here. Yeah. You know, just just looking for different ways, different opportunities to maybe share something or to kind of set myself apart. Right. But definitely, like when I'm not here is when I'm thinking about ways more than when I am. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. It's the it sets you up. What you do behind the scenes sets you up, like with, with what you said when you're on the pedestal. Yeah. And all those little decisions beforehand allow you to make those decisions in the moment yeah. um, that you might not be able to make if you were just trying to wing it every time, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I, I know that it's kind of like a mentality for a lot of people when they come to the barber shop. the barber shop has become like people's shrinks where they can come in and they can talk about their life, their job, their family. Like, you know, it seems like there's no rules when you walk into a barber yeah. shop. So do you find that to be true for you? Like when people sit down in your chair, is it kind of like the sometimes the, just the cat's out of the bag in every situation? Yeah, I, I, someone said that it's the only place that's not work and not your wife. Mm -hmm. So like you complain, can complain about the two. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> like wife's not here and work's not here. So, um, but yeah, I mean, people sit down and just tell me everything. Yeah. But then there's definitely some times where I've been cutting a guy's hair for a while, like he's a once a weeker, or, mm -hmm. I see him all the time, and like, um, you know, something happens in his life and he's asking for advice, or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, that I've, I've gotten the opportunity to speak into a couple times, kind of in that way, mm -hmm. just like, um, you know, mainly I, I try to be like, encouraging, Yeah. you know, like mm -hmm. I'm never like, you shouldn't have talked about your wife like that. Right. But, you know, it's different things. Yeah. Um, but the, the coolest thing, I feel like a, a lot of times people will just like ask me like, like, what do you have going on tonight? You right. know, casual conversation. And mm -hmm. like, I'll be like going to church or mm -hmm. band practice or whatever. And then they're like, oh, what church do you go yeah. to? And then I'll, I'll tell them the church and then they're like, I've been meaning to go to church, you know, and then like all of a sudden it just opens the door like yeah. they're asking me about church or they're asking me about this and it kind of just through that I've had pretty awesome opportunities and a lot of people have come to church or like every time I see them they're like, I didn't come, yeah. but you know, like yeah. they make themselves feel really guilty. And I feel like it's kind of like that combination of um, you being honest with what you're doing, but then also just that like feeling like people can be honest sitting in a chair yeah, and definitely. it's like there really is to a, a degree here where there's like there's no judgment I can speak my mind about whatever it is but then when they encounter someone like you who's you know on a the right path honest about it going in a direction those two kind of like opposing forces it seems like yeah. that when they meet can really open the door for the gospel and the yeah, truth of Jesus. Definitely. One of the guys that a situation like that happened where I was cutting his hair for a little bit uh -huh. and then um, like it came to the point where he was like, oh, like what are you doing later? And I was like going to church and we had that conversation. Mm -hmm. And then um, he started coming to the church. Uh, he went for a couple weeks and then we had a baptism and um, him and his like three-year-old daughter went out and got baptized yeah. and um, have been just seeking counsel like with different leaders at the church. So if you could give one piece of advice to somebody that, you know, is in, because a, a lot of people are in situations like this where they're 
um, not around the Christians all the time, whether it's school or work or whatever, what, what's some advice you would give someone that so that they can keep walking with God and kind of like you are, being an example? I think like the biggest thing is, like I look at being in the barber shop as an opportunity mm-hmm. to, to share my faith and to um, be an, an example. Mm-hmm. But sometimes when I'm only looking at it like, as an opportunity, I, I forget about just my own personal mm. growth, mm. and, I, and I, like I tend to think about, um, you know, what I'm doing here, and you know, my purpose when I'm at the shop, mm. and um, kind of neglect the just me at home, you know, still being a Christian. Right. You know what I mean? And so, um, you know, I just think of Jesus when he was tempted in the wilderness. And the things that he had to c- combat the temptation was the scriptures, mm. and just how, you know, I'm here, and, and I'm, and I'm, my purpose is to be sharing the gospel and to be an example. But before that, my purpose is to walk with Jesus, mm. and so just focusing on walking with Jesus yeah. before I get here right. is kind of, you know, the theme I think personally when I'm in a in a secular work yeah. environment is you know to be a, a christian in the environment not mm-hmm. to let the environment say anything right, about my totally. faith you know what i mean mm-hmm. all right so last question do you think alex will let me cut some of his hair let's do it come here let's fight come here come here no come here <laughs> <laughs> take, take this thing turn it on and just do a, like a line from right there to like behind you it's pretty far yeah, it's good. Like right there. Oh, one hundred? Yeah, but keep it pretty like lower. Right there. And I go right to left to right. I mean, just take it off, man. Yeah. Yeah. That much? Yeah. We're, you can just go all the way around the pedestal. No. Yeah. Yeah. Such a gentle touch. <laughs> Looks great, bud. <laughs> All right, well, if we're done with the interview, then I'm done with this haircut. <laughs> <laughs>